Hi, Mr. Haywood. Thank you for joining me today. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm originally from North Carolina, just about uh, two counties south, Montgomery County, Troy, a very rural uh, county. Um, I was actually the first in my family to go to college because uh, I received the teaching fellow, fellow scholarship. I went to NC State for my undergraduate. And then after I taught uh, a few years, I started teaching at Ragsdale High School. Um, I, I went back and got my master's degree. I uh, went on and got my national board certification after that. So uh, this is my 23rd year in education. So I did nine years at Ragsdale, and then I did five years at the early college in Randolph County in Asheboro. And this is my ninth year, I think, at ECG. So time's flying. I'm almost ready to retire. <laughs> um, what subject do you teach specifically? So I teach math. Um, most of the years I taught ninth graders, uh, which would be the math three um, and pre-calculus. And then this year I've moved up and now I'm teaching uh, AP calculus and um, pre-calculus. Okay. Um, why did you decide to become a teacher? Well, I've always been good at uh, at math and uh, the process, and I had a really good math teacher for 10th and 11th grade, and he was very encouraging. He said, you know, you should be a teacher. Um, and I took the little, uh, little survey, I don't know what it's called, about your interest survey, about what field you should go into. And it was like math and computers and engineering. I really liked computers at the time when did computer programming, um, basic kind of stuff, but I really enjoyed that. I had no clue what an engineer did because like I said, nobody in my family had ever gone to college. I didn't know what engineers did. I still don't really know, but uh, I need to do some more research into that. Uh, but it ended up being that I, I, I really liked math. I ended up doing a lot of tutoring for some younger students uh, in math and algebra one and that kind of stuff and really enjoyed it. And then just kind of set the path and it stuck to it ever since. Glad I did. <laughs> what inspires you? That's a good question. I don't know if I've got a, a really good answer uh, for that. I mean, I love seeing um, what what you guys, what students do in the classroom. It, it's pretty inspiring to be at ECG where I don't have to talk at you and stand up in front of the class and lecture so, and spoon feed it to you. So it's really inspiring to see you guys when I give you a task that you just get in there and attack it. And that that's pretty inspiring and kind of keeps me going uh, to try to be creative with some of the lessons and the the um, things that I give in class. Um, what is one of your hidden talents? Yeah, well, you know, if, most students have had me, so I don't know how hidden it is, but uh, I like uh, I like singing and playing guitar and banjo, uh, that kind of thing. I do, I am really good with a yo-yo. I won a contest when I was in eighth grade for a yo-yo. Cool. I'll practice <laughs> on that. Um, if you didn't become a teacher, what would you be? Uh, well, you know, a musician would be great. Uh, and if that didn't work out, uh, probably a barber. Uh, I like uh, something about that process, uh, about styling hair and beards and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> In which other teacher's class would you like to enroll even for a day and why? Well, I've known Mr. Johnson for 23 years and I've been in his class many days and uh, there's always good conversation when he's talking about uh, history and I, it seems like I always learn something new every time I'm in there. So uh, I'll, I'll just go with that because I, I, know, I know what I'm in for when I get into his class. What is one memory you have from when you, from when you were in school or college? That's a good question. Um, give me a minute to think. Oh, oh, I got one. Um, so when I was at NC State, uh, I was able to get tickets to the uh, basketball game uh, and we were playing uh, UNC and UNC was ranked number one at the time and NC State beat them. And it was kind of an amazing time. You went and kind of uh, walked down the streets and everybody was hooping and hollering and, and that was fun. Um, also, while I was in college, I got to see Garth Brooks live, do a live show. Uh, it was one of the, my first concerts I ever went to and it was really amazing. So uh, a couple of good, good times I remember from college. Um, if you could be anyone for a day, living or deceased, who would you be and why? If I 
can be someone. I don't know if I can be anybody else. Yeah. So I don't really know if I want to be anybody else. I'd like to meet some other people, uh, that kind of thing. But I can't think of anybody anybody else I really want to be. Uh, I try to be happy being myself, even though, you know, sometimes we struggle with that sometimes. I'm just going to leave it there. Okay, that's a good choice. What do you work towards in your free time? Um, well, I've got a couple of YouTube channels, so I'm trying to improve uh, the way my videos look. So just kind of that process of always trying to learn something. So uh, I've learned about lighting and uh, cameras and uh, video editing and, and some of that over the past year. I've really enjoyed that. Uh, the next venture for me will be more about music and being able to record some songs. I've got an audio interface coming and a microphone and that kind of stuff. So, so we can see if we can uh, lay down some vocal tracks too just for fun mm -hmm. your lighting always looks great <laughs> thank you do i went do i win the award for that yes <laughs> nice um what is your dream vacation dream vacation um well a couple of years ago my wife and i uh, were able to go to europe and that was pretty, it was called the European Dream Vacation, which was pretty cool. So we started in Italy, worked our way back. We went to Paris, we ended up in London and it was just amazing to go to Europe. Um, so something in Europe would definitely be my dream vacation to go back and do some of that stuff we did before a little bit slower. Uh, we did the, I went, went to the Eiffel Tower and um, went to the Coliseum and um, lots of lots of cool stuff. It's just an amazing time to go back and see uh, things that are older than the United States are. Um, you don't see buildings that are thousands of years old in the United States. So it's just a very, um, it's a little, little bit humbling and kind of awe inspiring to go back and see uh, some uh, buildings uh, that are that old. Um, what can you cook to perfection? I can cook about anything to perfection. You know, I'm a math person. So you give me a recipe, I can follow it pretty much step by step. But I'm pretty good at the grill. And then my wife likes to bake. So a lot of times I help her around holiday season um, with the cookies and that kind of stuff. Um, uh, some of the more intricate recipes have like a candy thermometer. So you have to really look and be careful not to over uh, overcook something or heat it up too much. So uh, that's always fun. It's kind of one of our um, together things that my wife and I do is do some of that baking. If you could have any superpower, what would that be? Super power. How about to heal people? That would be a good one. I want the power of healing. We can heal all these people from uh, cancer and uh, COVID and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, if you could grow up in any decade, which would you choose? Um, so I'd probably choose the 1950s. I mean, it's the birth of rock and roll. Um, have a lot of cool stuff. Television was coming uh, coming in. Uh, to play there. Um, just a lot of stuff going on in the 1950s into the 1960s, I think would be pretty cool. If you were to be given a superlative when you were in school, what would it have been? Well, I won one for most intelligent, so we, we, we'll go with that. Um, you know, I would hope to win for like most talented would be good, but <laughs> we'll go with those. Thank you. And then lastly, what one piece of advice would you give to your students? Uh, just a reminder that the motivation has to come from within. You can't rely on somebody else to motivate you to do something. You've got to really want it yourself and to go after it and not um, let um, fear or apprehension or uh, lethargy, any of that stuff to hold you back. You just have to get it in your mind and go for it. Okay. Uh... Oh, also, this is just a request, but could you play the banjo? Could I play the banjo? I can play a little round of something. Yeah. I'm out of practice, but I'll see what I can do. Okay. <clears throat> Who requested that, Annika? I did. <laughs> I may have to tune it up. Give me just a second here. Okay. 
Can I tell you a minute? I can tell you something about my banjo first. So this is a 1930 Gibson uh, banjo. Um, uh, my parents bought this for me right before my mother died. So this is kind of a special family heirloom uh, for me. So I wanted to take a second to tell you about that. And we'll see what we can do about playing it. 